In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to recreate the Black Panther movie poster text in Photoshop. Hi, I'm Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the Black Panther text effect in Photoshop. We're going to use advanced layer style techniques to recreate the effect. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so even if you're a beginner, you can follow along. Okay, let's get started. We're going to work with this document here. But before I do, I want to mention that this file is available for you to download so that you could follow along. There's a link to it right below in the description. So we have this gray background layer, which is the layer that we're going to be working with. I have a background layer that is the layer that we will use once we finish the tutorial. We have a text layer, a flare layer, and a texture layer. And the text layer uses a font called Wolfbane 2. This is the font that I found that most closely resembled the Black Panther logo. This is a free font. I'll put a link to it right below in the description. Okay, so the first step is to select the texture layer, enable that. Then I'm going to click and drag that texture layer into the text group. And there it is. Then I'm going to press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. And that creates a clipping mask, which means that the text layer is now controlling the visibility of the font layer. Then I'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer and I'm going to change the color to this predefined blue that I have, which is 20, 100, and 160. And those are the RGB values that'll get us this blue that you see here. I'm gonna press OK. Then I'm gonna press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac to turn that solid layer into a clipping mask. And I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply to apply the color onto that texture layer. Then I'm going to rename the layer and I'll just call it color, just so that I know what that layer is doing. And you don't need to do this, but I'm going to delete the layer mask and I'm doing it so that it's more clean that you see what's going on. Now I'm going to select the Black Panther layer and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. So I'm holding it down, click and drag and release right above the color layer and that's going to duplicate that layer. And now we're going to start applying layer styles to this text layer to create the effect. And there's one very important thing that I want you to keep in mind. And this actually relates to everything, not just text. But in Photoshop, it's always a good idea to separate large elements into smaller elements so that you can control them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to control each individual element with a new layer. And we're going to stack those elements on top of each other to create the final effect. So with this Black Panther copy, we're going to rename it to highlights slash shadows. Then I'm going to right click and select blending options. This is going to bring the layer style dialog up and we can apply layer styles to this layer. The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the fill opacity to zero. So the fill opacity at zero makes that layer completely invisible. However, any layer styles that will apply will become visible. In other words, the only visible pixels on this layer will now be the pixels that we apply through the layer style window. Then I'm going to create a color overlay. I'm going to change the color to white. Press OK. I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and it creates the highlight. Then I'm going to click on gradient overlay. Now I have the second option selected, which is foreground to transparent. Notice that my foreground color is black, so it's selecting black and it's making the rest of the gradient transparent. So if I double click on this, it will bring up the gradient editor. And you can see here the color stops at the bottom are black. When I select them, you can see what the color is and the location. So it's black all across the board. The color stops on top control opacity. Notice that the black one is at 100% opacity and the white one is at 0%. So that might be a little confusing if you're used to layer mask because with layer mask, black hides in white reveals. However, with this gradient is the other way around. So white is going to be 0% opacity. So you can see that opacity level at zero when I select this stop. Once again, black is opacity at 100. Then I'm going to change the layer opacity to 85. And the scale is at 50. Make sure that you have align with layer selected and press OK. OK, now it's time to work on the bevel, the outline that we're going to have around the text. 
So I'm going to duplicate the layer once again by holding Alt, Option, and the Mac and clicking and dragging all the way up to the top of the layer stack. And I'm going to call this layer Bevel Main. It will be my main bevel. This time I'm going to double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. And we're going to add a bevel, but first we're going to add a stroke. And the reason that we're going to add a stroke is because I want to have a bevel that only affects that stroke. So with this stroke layer style, we're going to change the size to 10, position inside, blending mode normal, opacity at 100%. And we're going to change the color to this RGB value to 20 by 190, 105, and press OK. We're going to go into the bevel, and notice that the bevel and emboss is visible throughout the entire layer. However, if we change the style to stroke emboss, this emboss will only be visible wherever we have a stroke. So now I can start adjusting this bevel. I'm going to click on reset to default and I'm going to adjust it. But actually, before I do that, there's one step that I miss, which is in the blendings option. Make sure that you have fill set to zero because once again, the only pixels that we want to see are the pixels that are created through the layer style window. So I'm going to go back into bevel and emboss. We're going to leave the depth at 100, change the size to 10, soften is fine at 0, the altitude 90 degrees and 30 works great, and we're going to change the gloss contour to this last one here on the second row. It's very unlikely that you change these gloss contours, but if you did, you can reset them to default by clicking on this gear icon and clicking on reset contours and select the last one. The gloss contour works directly with the bevel and emboss layer style. It allows you to distribute the color over the layer based on the curve that you selected. This command is perfect for creating a glossy metallic appearance. Notice how that changes how the bevel and emboss is applied to the text. Now we're going to work on the highlights and shadows. Make sure that you have black and white. And screen and multiply will work for the blending modes. And we'll use an opacity of 100 for the highlights and an opacity of 75% for the shadows. And it looks like I accidentally didn't select the right style. Just make sure that you have Stroke and Boss selected. And press OK when you're done. And this is already looking a lot like the Black Panther text that you've seen in the movie posters. Talking about the movies, let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the Black Panther movie. I thought it was a really good movie. It had great action, a great story, and good music. It's definitely in my top five of superhero movies. But anyway, we're going to duplicate this layer by pressing Control J, that's Command J on the Mac, and we're going to call this layer Bevel Highlight. And you guessed it, this is going to be the highlight for the bevel. I'm going to double click to the side of the layer. I'm going to go into the stroke, and I'm going to change the size to five pixels. It's going to make that smaller. And I'm going to bring the opacity of the stroke down to zero because I want the stroke to be invisible. I only need it as an outline for the bevel and emboss. So bring the opacity down to zero. In the bevel and emboss, we're going to make a few changes. We're going to change the depth to 330, size to 20, and we're going to change the glass contour to the first one in the second row, and it'll create that effect you see there. Then we're going to change the highlight blending mode to color dodge, which will create a brighter and hotter highlight. Then bring the opacity down to 50%. Shadow is okay with multiply and black as the color, and just bring the opacity down to 25. And if I uncheck this preview button, you can see the before and the after. So we added that highlight on top of the text. And again, as you're working on this tutorial, see how we take each individual piece of the puzzle and put it together. So that's the real purpose of this tutorial for you to understand that you don't need a single layer style for the entire text. You can take those individual pieces and stack them on top of each other to create even more interesting effects. With the bevel highlight selected, I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac, and this is going to be a bevel shadow so we had the highlight below i'm going to double click to the side of the layer and i'm going to change the size of the stroke to 15 so this is going to be larger then i'm going to go into the bevel and emboss i'm going to change the glass contour to this second one on the second row 
I'm going to disable the highlights by just dragging the opacity down to zero. So this is before and after. So you can see now how we're creating that outline effect around the text. Then I'll press OK. OK, now that we have the shadow and highlight, we're going to create two more layers that are going to help enhance each one of those. So with the bevel shadow selected, I'm going to press Control J, Command J to duplicate. And I'm going to call this Shadow Enhance. I'm going to double click to the side of the layer and I'm going to disable the stroke and I'm going to change the bevel and emboss to inner bevel. So now the bevel is controlled by the entire text layer and not the stroke. I'm going to change the depth to 100, size to 5, and I'm going to select the very first gloss contour, the default one. Since we're working with shadows, we don't need any highlights, so opacity is good at 0. And we're going to change the shadow opacity to 30. So this is before and after. It's just adding an enhancement to the shadows. I'm going to press OK. So now that we enhance the shadows, we're going to enhance the highlights. And we're going to use two layers for that. We're going to use a layer to enhance the highlights on the left side and another layer to enhance the shadows on the right side. So let's get started with the left. I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac. I'm going to double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. Under Bevel and Emboss, I'm going to uncheck Use Global Light because I don't want to affect the original lighting. Notice that if I change this, it changes the entire effect, and I don't want to do that. So I want to keep it where I had it before at 90 and 30, and I'm going to uncheck this so that I can move that point around and not really affect the entire document, only the layer that we're working with. So I'm going to start with the depth at 100. Direction up, size at 5, soften at 0 is good. And we're going to use an angle of negative 175 and an altitude of 0. Then I'm going to increase the highlight opacity to 70. And I'm going to disable the shadow by typing 0 in the opacity. So now we created that highlight on the left hand side of the text. Do you see that tiny little circle here in the, in the shading options? That little circle there, that represents where the light is coming from. So the light is coming from the left. So that's why we get that effect that you see there, that highlight on the left hand side. I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate one more time. And actually, let me rename this layer so that we know what it is. This one is highlight left, and this one will be highlight right. I'm going to bring up the layer style window and we only need to change two things. I'm going to go into bevel and emboss and just click on down. So now we get the opposite side. So sort of an inversion and I'm going to reduce the highlight opacity to 40 just so that the effect looks more realistic. You wouldn't really have the same highlight on both sides. So one side would be a bit dimmer and then press OK. With that highlight layer selected, you can then hold shift and click on the Black Panther text and press Control G, Command G on the Mac. And that is our main text. So I'll just, I'll call it main text. What we're going to do now is use an extrusion technique that uses Photoshop's repeat transformation keyboard shortcut. So basically we're going to make a selection, fill the contents of that, distort it one time, and then we're going to use a keyboard shortcut that's going to keep on extruding it, keep on making that same change to create the effect. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So what you need to do is hold Control. Command on the Mac and click on the text layer icon on the original layer so that you make a selection on the active pixels of that layer. So you basically are making a selection around the text. Then above the gray background, create a new layer and fill it with black. Black is my foreground color. So Alt and Backspace. There it is. Black. Then I'm going to press Control T, Command T to transform, and we're going to make a transformation. Make sure that you click on this chain link icon to constrain the width to the height, then type 99.9% and then hit enter, return to the Mac twice. So we just did a very, very small change, but I want to keep repeating that change over and over and over and over again on that same layer and create new pixels. To do so, you can hold Control Alt Shift T. Once again, Control Alt Shift T. 
that's command option shift T on the Mac and just keep on pressing the T key. So you're holding the modifier keys and then tapping on the T key. And watch what happens. Every time I tap on the letter T, I'm extruding that layer. So I'm scaling it inward by 0.1%. And when it's about this thick, you can press Control D, Command D to deselect. And now we have our first level of extrusion there. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see. Notice how we extruded that out. This extrusion looks very realistic because we scaled it 99% from the center each time we apply that transformation. That makes it so that the inner characters have no bevel and the outer characters have a large bevel, which is why you don't see much of an extrusion on the T, but you definitely see it on the P and on the R. So the extrusion progressively gets larger towards the edges, so it's more realistic. And you can call this layer extrusion edge. Then I'm going to double click to the side of it to apply a bevel and emboss. And we're going to use a stroke for this. And the stroke color is going to be 140 by 105 and 50, which is this brown color and press OK. Then I'm going to increase the opacity because I do want to be able to see that color. See how I fill that in. Then go into bevel and emboss. And of course, we're going to do stroke emboss. And right off the bat, I'm going to check use global light because we want to use the original lighting for the entire scene, the one that's 90 over 30. I'm going to change the depth all the way to 1000. I'm going to make the size 20. And for the glass contour, we're going to do something different. We're going to make a custom one. So select the second one here, then double click on the contour icon to get this graph here. And what we can do now is make our own custom one. So I'm going to click and drag this one up. And notice that when I do that, I get these highlights here on the text. See that? So that's making it look more chrome, which is what I want. And I'm going to bring this one down. And I can click and drag points out. So I just click and drag one away. And I'm just trying to place these in a way that I can get a nice effect here. Something like that. Maybe drag this one up a little bit so you can see how I'm getting these nice highlights there. Press OK when you're done. And I'm going to change the blending rule for the highlights to screen. 40% is good. And I'll enable the shadows by typing 35 on the opacity. So this is before and after. So we got nice highlights and reflections on that extrusion. OK, now that we have the extrusion edge completed, I'm going to create yet another extrusion layer to take the text back even further. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to press Control, that's Command on the Mac, and click on the extrusion edge, then create a new layer and fill that layer with black. Black is my foreground color, so I can simply hit Alt and Backspace. And I can put this below the extrusion edge and I'll call it Main Extrusion. Photoshop still remembers that previous transformation we just did, so we can continue using that same keyboard shortcut to extrude it even further. So I'm going to press Control, Alt, Shift, T, and I'm going to just keep tapping on the T while holding the modifier keys to extrude that even further. By the way, if you close Photoshop or made another transformation in between this step and the previous one, you will need to do the 99.9 .9 step all over again with this layer. So you can decide how thick you want your extrusion to be. Mine looks pretty good at that thickness. Then I'm going to press Control D, Command D to deselect. And I'm going to duplicate the layer style by holding Alt and dragging the FX icon onto the main extrusion layer. Then I'm going to double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style dialog. And I'm going to disable the stroke, select color overlay, and I'm going to set the blending mode to normal. And the color is going to be this color here, 120, 90, and 40, which is this brown color. Press OK. Now with the bevel and emboss, I'm going to change this into inner bevel. Depth at 1000. Down size will change to 70. Soft is OK at 0. The angle and altitude work with the defaults of 90 and 30. And we're going to change the gloss contour to the third one on the second row. Then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And I'm going to increase the opacity to 50%. And I'll leave the color set to white. For the shadows, black and multiply work. 
and I'm going to change the opacity to 50%. So that's before and after. I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to enhance this extrusion. So with the main extrusion selected, I'm going to press Control J, Command J, and call it Extrusion Enhance. So this is enhancing that extrusion. I'm going to bring up Layer Style, uncheck Color Overlay, bring the Fill Opacity to zero, because the only visible pixels that we want are the pixels that we create through this layer style. Then under Bevel and Emboss, I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to change the direction to up, and I'm going to change the glass contour to this one here, the one that looks like a bunch of steps, the second to last on the second row. And I'm going to add two colors, one for the highlights and one for the shadows. For the highlights, the color is going to be 255, 215, and 90 is that yellow color that you see there. For the shadows, I'm going to put in 30, 25, and 10. It's a dark brown color. And I'm actually going to change the highlight blending mode to screen. And that's the before and after. So you can see that by adding this enhanced layer, we really made it look realistic in a lot of the angles that you see in the text. Then press OK. And what I'm going to do now is put those layers into a group and call it Extrusion. So click on the top one, hold Shift, click on the bottom one, Control G, Command G. That goes right into a group and I'll call it Extrusion. So this is my extrusion layers here, my main text. And what we're going to do now is add the lines that are inside of the text in the Black Panther logo. So I'm only going to do one letter. I'm going to do the letter P because it's going to be a repetitive process and you only need to see it one time really so i don't want to waste too much of your time so we're going to do it with the letter p but you can repeat that same process with all the other letters in reality there's two things you need to know first i'm going to select the gray background and i'm going to select the line tool make sure that weight is at five pixels no stroke and the color really doesn't matter so we'll just make it red and simply click and drag Hold shift to make a straight line. And let me actually place that right above everything else, right up here. There it is, there's my red line. And we're not gonna worry about the color or layer style. We're gonna apply that to all the lines at the same time. And the other type of line that you need to create is a line with a curve for areas like this part of the P. Now you can certainly draw that with a pen tool, but I think it's easier to use the ellipse tool since it'll give you a much better result. So let me show you what I mean by that. Select the ellipse tool and I'm just going to click away from that shape. So make sure that you have no fill, a stroke of whatever color, in this case red, and five pixels for the stroke. Then click and drag to make your circular arc line there, that line right there. But we don't need the entire circle. We only need this half. So what you can do is click on the direct selection tool, click on that point, and simply hit the delete key on the keyboard and click on yes, and you'll have that nice round line there. Now, if you need to make changes, you can always come in and add or subtract points. It's better to simply click on add anchor point, click somewhere on the line, like maybe here, and then go back into the direct selection tool and click on this point and hit delete to eliminate it. So once you draw the lines out on all the characters, what you need to do is put them all into a group. So I have this ellipse here and this shape here. Hold Shift, click on both, Control G, Command G on the Mac, and I can call this line. And I'm going to double click to the side of the group. And what this allows you to do is apply a layer style to all the contents of the group. So we only need to do it once for all the contents. Select Color Overlay. And I'll just use a lighter version of that brown. This time I'm just going to simply drag up and select this brown here. So 159, 119, and 54, and press OK. Then click on bevel and emboss and i'm just going to hit the reset to default and i'm going to go into texture and notice what happens i'm going to press ok and i'm going to zoom in so that you could see we can actually apply a texture to that so i'm going to click on the bevel and emboss label it brings it up directly to that part and i'm going to go into texture and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go into reset patterns press ok so i'm looking at the default list then click on this one here. I'm going to change the depth to two and then use the up arrow keys on the keyboard to increase it. 10 should work. Then go into bevel and emboss and adjust 
the shadows and highlights. So maybe something like that. Then press OK, fit the image to screen, and now we have that there. The one thing I may add though is a drop shadow. And actually what I'll do is I'll use an outer glow. So this is a glow, but we don't have to use it as a glow just because the label said so. You can use the layer styles for anything that you want. So we're going to use this glow as a shadow. I'm going to reset the outer glow to default. Then I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply so that we keep black pixels. We're going to use it as a shadow. Change the color to black and maybe bring down the opacity a little bit to about 10% and press OK. OK, now that we have the lines, we're going to work on the flares. So I'm going to click on the move tool, enable this flare layer and the flare is that there we want to remove the background and just keep the bright area so we're going to use a blending mode the screen blending mode does just that it keeps the highlights and removes the shadow so we have this nice flare here so we can just place that above the r there and i'm going to hold alt option in the mac and click and drag to duplicate that layer and place it right about here i can also press ctrl t command t to transform and make that larger and and scale it out and inward just so that it's a bit different than the first one we used. And I'm going to disable the gray background and just enable this blue layer there. And by the way, if you create something using this technique, don't forget to share it on Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite technique. And by the way, that cool looking font that you've been seeing throughout this tutorial, that is a font based off the end credits of the movie Black Panther. That one, unfortunately, is not free, but there's a link down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.